to what we got out here this is the capri 22 and we're just going to demonstrate very few points in regards to the safety equipment on board and also the outboard how to operate it how to you know get it going okay so when it comes to safety equipment we have to paddle over there okay which uh every boat has two of them okay and what you can use the paddle for is actually to pull the boat but better yet you can actually use it to push it okay and if there's anything that you know like there's another boat that you're going to be hitting you can actually fend off with the paddle another item that you can actually use is the uh, bulk of it. it has the same function okay and this one's uh one that you can actually stand nice and easy and alex is going to go ahead and push and pull he can actually grab onto the cleat and he can actually pull the boat towards him or he can also push the boat away from him one of the things you do not want to do is place the boat hook okay any part of the boat hook against your body okay because it can penetrate and hurt you uh, another item that we have is the type 4 which is a throwable cushion and like Alex is going to get up over here and I can actually take this cushion and punch him okay and he's not feeling it but another thing that you can do is you can squeeze this in between the boat and the dog or between the boat and another boat okay you can also go ahead and uh just wrap it around the boat hook and you have a fender that you can move around okay another nice thing to have is going to be that throw rope now just about every boat in our, our fleet is gonna have one pretty soon this one's my own personal one so I added a little buoy to it. So when you throw it, there's a little bit more weight to it. But over here at uh, Fairwind, there's always somebody at the dock. And if you get into a jam and somebody's here, you can just throw them the line and they can help you recover the boat, okay? When you get to the boat, uh, the boat's gonna have the outboard, it's gonna have the cover, the tiller is gonna have the cover. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and remove both covers and unlock the lock. It's going to go ahead and tilt the outboard to the proper position by releasing the latch that is on the starboard side of the engine midway. Okay. Now what's really important to do is to place the outboard in the neutral position, the gear shift, okay, and go ahead and try to lift it up and see if it locked. As, as we can tell, it actually locked. Okay, now what he's going to be doing now is he's going to check whether the outboard pivots or not. And this one, it should not pivot because we put a bracket on the outboard so the engine will not pivot so it's not going to move from left to right if you want to steer the boat you have to use the tiller there's a metal piece on at the end of the hose that, okay and you have to squeeze that metal piece in before you hook it up into the uh, connector and alex is going to remove the rubber that's covering the connector, that's protecting the connector, okay? The metal piece is get squeezed and uh, the connector is actually placed into the outboard itself. And the metal part goes on the, as you're looking at the outboard, it goes to, towards the right. We need to make sure that the uh, fuel tank has fuel and there's an indicator, a gauge, that actually tells you, you can actually feel the tank and you know you can actually lift it up slightly and you can tell that whether it's full or not like in this case it's totally full uh next item that we need to do is we need to uh, let air into the tank 
and like it says on the tank itself turn cap to the right until it clicks this opens the vent and we're open okay at this point what we want to do is we want to prime the bulb a few times until we can send some uh, pressure on it so alex is going to press it press it a few more times uh, best you can okay we're going to go ahead and lower the outboard into the water and in order to do that we have to utilize the bracket that is a stainless steel bracket and there is actually two holes if you got quite a few people inside the boat you would use the not the very top but the second hole otherwise you would use the very top one okay right now we're gonna put it on the first notch okay and as you can see the outboard it's in the water you know there's good distance on it okay but uh he's there only by himself so there isn't that much weight in the boat and right now what he's gonna do he's gonna go to the next notch so you can tell how far the outboard goes in the water okay now if you go to the very top notch and you got quite a few people on, on the boat it's not good for the outboard and what i'm gonna do right now is i'm gonna get on on the boat so you, you can appreciate that So what really depends on which notch you actually utilize is the amount of people you get on board. We're right here, locking it. Cynthia. We want to bring it back out the same way that you put it here. You release it, it's released. You lift it. Right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and start the engine. So what we need to do is we need to put the kill switch on the switch. We're going to go ahead and pull the choke out. We're going to put the throttle position to start. And we're going to go ahead and pull the cord. The engine started a first crack, so now what we're going to do is we're going to push the choke in little by little, and we're going to give it a little bit of gas. All right. Once the choke is already all the way in and the engine hasn't died, we're going to go ahead and lower the RPMs by throttling down. stop the engine is by pushing the kill switch even though there is this uh, plastic piece that's in between if you press on it you can actually stop the engine that way when you guys are ready to put the boat away what you need to do is you need to run the fuel that is in the line and the carburetor out um, just run it out so what you do is you disconnect the fuel hose and just let the outboard run out of fuel so when we're putting the engine away what you need to do is you need to put the motor in forward, otherwise the latch will not disengage. So I'm going to tilt up the throttle and I'm going to pull and then it will disengage and then it locks. Whenever you're getting ready to go out, you need to see where the wind's coming from. You can feel it on your face, you can feel it on your body. You can just look up to the mass fly and it's going to tell you where the wind's coming from. At this point, the wind's coming mostly from the west, which is towards the sea over there. Now, if the wind's pointing slightly south, all the way up to probably this direction, which would be north 
west okay you're okay to take the boat out under sail okay now if the wind's coming straight from the north you should not take the uh, boat under sail okay if the wind's coming from the east you're not going to be able to raise the sails because the wind's going to be behind you so in that case you only have the two choices you have is to take the boat under power alone or under oars or a combination of the two every time you go out you should be able to communicate with your crew and let's say for instance that art over here is a five-year-old and uh, he's acting like one right <laughs> art that stick that you're holding on to that actually directs the boat where to go now all I'm, all I'm gonna ask you to do is I want you to push it away from you okay a little bit more right there that's as far as I want you to push it out now, that's too far only go up to this plate right here okay this pan plate okay if I tell you to push it that's as far as I want you to go now I'm not gonna ask you to bring that stick to the center excellent that is the center now i'm gonna ask you to pull the stick towards you you gotta move forward okay and move the stick above you and then bring it down okay which is to that position over there we need to simplify it everything but at the same time uh make sure that the commands that you give out are correct One of the things that I suggest you do before you go out is to go ahead and uh, grab a line and just put a bowline on it. And the bowline is actually going to have a big circle on it. And this is going to help you as a stopping line. All right. And at the other end, if you need to, okay, you can put a small bowline. Okay. This one has a, happens to have a stopper note, not, but you can just do a small bowling on this end. And what this is gonna become, is gonna become your um, stopping line, okay? Which we'll demonstrate in a little bit. Normally nowadays, what we're actually telling the membership is when they take out the Capri 22s to have the sails completely up. We're also using the engine and the engine is there only as a backup, okay? Another thing that we wanna make sure is that everything is pretty much set to go, like the boom bank should be snug, not tight. He wants to also go ahead and take out the pigtail, which actually we call it a topping lift over here. Okay, so to do that, all he has to do is raise the boom a little bit and, and clip the clip oh, for the pigtail and then clip it back on to the back seat. I like to have all the spaghetti and the spaghetti is actually all your lines. Make sure that all the lines are out of the way. They're, you're not going to be able to trip on them. Okay, you want to figure out where the wind's coming from. In this case, it's coming from the west. So as you go out this way, the wind's gonna be coming from the 12 o'clock position. We're gonna be going to the three o'clock position. So what what would this be? This will be a beam breach or a beam, which is normally what I call it. So you wanna set up your main sheet to a beam position. So you need to step on the main sheet a little bit, okay? And then you lock it up like Art's doing. He locks it up, okay? He makes sure that the main sheet's gonna travel nicely okay that it's not tangled like it is you have to remember this are club boats so you never know how the person before you left the boat so you want to make sure everything is set and it's ready to go for you the jib must be completely loose okay you want that jib to go anywhere it wants to go once you start getting a little way you start bringing it in little by little your main sheet is going to be the one that makes most of the propulsion forward that's going to be the main sheet so that's the, the one that you want you want to be working they're using the engine as a little backup 
but at the same time, they're going to be using the sail to go out. You've got plenty of room, plenty of time to do whatever you need to do. As you notice, the main sheet is actually catching now. There's a little bit of sideway movement, but the boat is actually propelling forward. Now if you spring in the jib in, and art steering away from the boat. Right now, there, he's slowing the boat down a little bit by making a wide turn. He's going to bring it in. And he's filling most of the speed over here. Okay. And he turns it into a slip. He comes in. The sails are going to be neutralized by placing it wherever they want to go. And he gets this brake line ready to tie up over here in this way and this time I'm actually holding it but we're already set you're actually using people power to get out and this is very similar to what you do with rambling and uh, solely you come out here bring it out okay and you're turning it can. And then you bring it over to you. You're utilizing the lifelines a little bit, getting the boat away from your neighbors right here. And then at this point, what you will do, you will actually hop on and at the same time push out. But I'm not going to get on. Okay? And normally, what you would do is you would just hop on at that point sail away. Art's coming in basically the same way we've been doing it. But he's coming in, standing up, and what it does, it gives you a little bit more visibility. And you can actually come in no problems. And he has his uh, brake line ready. Just step off the, into the dock and done. You're taking the boat out. The engine quit at that point, so what are they supposed to do? Well, they got two paddles, and what they can do is they can paddle towards the end. And another thing that they're doing is they're staying close. They're staying close to the boats over here on the windward side. If Art were to uh, push it a little more, okay, on this side. Okay, Alex, Alex, slow down. Okay, pedal on the starboard side. Okay. As you can see, their tiller is to starboard. And their rudder is to starboard. And they're trying to bring the boat out. Okay. So you got plenty of time to correct whatever needs to be done. And if for any reason you get too close to the lure boats, you can always use the pedals to fend off. You can always use other means to fend off. As you can see, they're bringing the boat back, okay, with the paddles, and it's not a big deal. It's just something very simple that you can do, and you could also have gone out. And as you can tell, he's using this oar to fend off. We have a throw rope that we can actually use to help you get back into the dock. If you have any Fairwind members at the dock, they can actually, you can actually call out for help and they should be able to help you out if they can. Right now, they're 
engine starting to quit. They're having problems with it. They're not backing out as fast as they were before. Art's getting ready to throw the line, okay? And now Art's gonna throw the line because they actually got into a jam. He's going to go towards the front of the boat and he can actually put it in one of the plates if he wants to. If he, he can just hold on to it and make him pull him in. Like I'm doing right now. Now I can just walk around and kind of like guide him. But he could also use the tiller on the boat to come in. The reason why it's important to put it on the cleat is because that way I can guide it any way I want. See, like right now, I'm gonna make the boat turn. And they're fending off, but in reality, I'm fending off from this end and I'm guiding the boat totally in. Even though that it went crooked, we can actually just fix it. Now the bumpers are taking over. This is the easiest way to put the rope back into the bag is with two people. Put the rope over your shoulder. Have somebody holding it. And then just tuck it in. Yeah. So is that about 50 feet? Yep. Sounds about right. The engine's going to fail and they don't have their oars ready, they don't have anything ready. So what they're going to do is the next best thing which is to deploy the jib. Now when you deploy the jib, you deploy it nice and easy, okay? You want to make sure that you don't put it in super tight to the boat because otherwise all it's going to do is going to push you to the lower boat. Deploy it. No so as you can see, they're starting to move towards the lure side of the, foot, of the boat. Okay, but he needs to, uh, he's going to be regaining control in a few seconds. Okay, just it takes a little bit of uh, side motion before you can actually get forward motion. And they're starting to get a little bit of forward motion. But that is the reason why you want to stay close to the windward side. Just in case you need to do this. Uh, technique over here, you need a little bit of room to get away from them. He is steering. You've got to get away before you get any steering. Okay, steer. As you can tell, the boat is turning nicely. Now they get, they've got a little bit of way on. And the wind speed is very light right now. It's probably about four or five knots. If we were to have a little bit more wind, that would be a lot easier. Okay, right now the wind's just coming typical from the west and they're gonna go ahead and dock it with just the jib. Okay, and as you can tell, they're coming in at a good speed, not, but not excessive speed. They're coming into a spot and they're spilling a little bit of speed by overturning their dock. And right now, they should be able to fall off nice and easy. Okay, and now the brake line was applied to one of the dock plates and the boat is totally stopped. Okay guys, so they're ready. The boat is a little crooked right now, but that's not a big deal. We can actually use the boat hook straight now. Okay, I can push on that one. Of this one. Okay, and get the boat straight. Okay. Now, if there any lines that are tied up, let's go ahead and loosen them up, please. Will do. Bow line loose. Okay, so I can actually pull the boat over here and straighten out the boat, and I'm ready to go out. The jib is ready and set to go out at whatever. Point of sail will be on the floor. We're going to go in reverse. Just to make it a little easier. Right here, you 
bring it in, you give it, you give it a little bit of gas. Okay, you can do it manually. You can do it by working your main sheet. By compartment. And at this point, I'm actually going down. Okay, nice and easy. Easy as five, guys. Alright? So right now, what I'm going to do is to, to make it easier, okay, I'm going to go ahead and use the engine to go out. And then I'm going to come in and show you how to dock it. docking it but it's a little bit more of an advanced technique and what you do on the last turn that I did I fill on my speed okay so once you get accustomed to it this is a pretty good way to come in but uh, you have to be very precise otherwise you're gonna hit the dog or you're gonna hit the wall being a mechanical engine there's gonna be times that uh, that the engine's just gonna quit on you, okay? And the one thing that you want is you want control of the boat. And in order for you to have control of the boat, you have to be able to steer the boat, okay? At this moment, what we're doing is we're pointing into the wind. Let's say, I'm gonna put the engine in neutral, but let's say that the engine just died on us and we need to regain control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the boat around and I'm gonna be going with the wind, okay? So basically, we're gonna go ahead and sail without sails, okay? And that's something that is very commonly done, and especially with sailboats that have uh, uh, some type of scoop sail. Scoop sail is nothing more than a dodger, okay? Most of our large boats have uh, a dodger on them, so you can actually sail them like a uh, like if you had a you know like a regular sail and as you can see um, if we pan to the side over there you're going to notice that the boat is actually moving it's not moving fast okay but we're still moving at a, at a rate of about three quarters of a knot maybe a knot and the best thing is that i have steerage and i'm going to go ahead and head up to that uh, one of those docks over there and i'm heading up to the dock with just a natural wind Okay, and if I have um, Alex over here stand up, he can actually face the wind and he can actually create a little bit of um, resistance to the wind. So he's moving us a little faster. Okay, and as you can tell, we picked up at least two tenths of a mile. Okay, so it pays off to sail with big guys sometimes. Not always, <laughs> but sometimes. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is the uh, brake line that we used earlier. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and uh, cleat our line to the cleat of the dock. And that's gonna stop the boat from going any further. Now I'm getting closer to the dock. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and, and just step off or just go ahead and cleat it. Okay. We're stepping off. We cleat it right there. Okay, and the boat's just gonna stop nicely. Okay, now once the boat's been stopped, okay, now what we need to do, since we're a sailboat, we can actually sail away. Now, how do we turn the boat? Basically, all you're doing is holding on to the dock line, okay, at the bow, and the wind will do all the maneuvering for you. It's gonna go ahead and push the boat sideways, okay? And as long as there's a little bit of wind, the boat will be turned. Now, if you wanna increase a little bit of manual labor that Ken's doing, you can actually pull it a bit and just speed up the process, okay? And then when you tie it up, uh, if you clean it, the boat is just gonna drift up to the dock, okay? Even if you got quite a bit of play on it, 
just going to put it back and eventually it's just going to go against the dog. Folks, uh, you got to remember the boat does not need to be into the wind. What needs to be into the wind is the sail and the boom. We're going to go ahead and sail out of here. And as you can see, our sails are pretty much set to the way they should be able to get out. So right now my helper over here, uh, Ken, what he's going to do is he's going to pull us towards the sea and at the same time he's going to give us a push on the bow area so we can get an alignment. Go ahead and push us out. <laughs> 